Captain Rokoth Telat was in the process of attaching the last three electrodes to Alcara's left temple when Garan reached the door. A cold shiver ran down the back of his head and spine as a disturbing thought occurred to him. I hope he hasn't changed the code. His fingers were a blur in the early morning gloom as he punched in the characters. N-A-E-A-E-D-D-Y-A-W. The armor-plated, automated sliding doors opened with a hushed sound. Garan immediately evaluated the scene in front of him. His wife of nine years was restrained on a table with his commanding officer and personal archenemy, holding a wire that ended in a small metal cup and ran to an open white case on a trolley. His eyes met those of Captain Telat. The superior officer's thoughts transformed at that moment from megalomania and lust to abject fear. He released his hold on the capped wire and raised his forearm to block Garan, who had launched himself across the room at the Detosian commander. Words were not exchanged. The fighting was too sudden and intense. Both combatants were fiercely motivated by Alcara, who was struggling to scream through her newly fitted gag. Both men had fallen in love with her the day they met. Garan had won her heart when all three were in upper school. Rokoth grew resentful and studied to become an officer. Some time later, Garan joined the Detosian Grand Army and was posted to the Seventh Light Infantry. Unfortunately, this was where the then Lieutenant Telat was stationed. Rokoth Telat had done everything possible to make both of their lives unbearable. He had denied Garan Lee for months on end. He had Aide charged with offenses that he never committed. Garan's men always got the most dangerous missions, and these were poorly planned. For six years, Rokoth tried allow Garan to be killed by the enemy, but he always survived. Fists were loosed in barrages of resounding solid and rapid strikes. Exquisite ornaments and expensive models of various Detosian military aircraft were smashed as the violent waltz crashed through the living area of the captain's quarters. Blinded by rage and incensed by Telat's treatment of his wife, Garan was hitting hard, but not often. Captain Telat edged his way toward the stove, upon which rested a large copper pot of vegetable oil. It had been cooling for a while, and so was not at an extremely high temperature, but it was still quite capable of burning to stun. Captain Telat avoided a swift circular punch from his attacker and grasped the handle of the formidable vessel, half full with thick, hot, liquid fat. Garan Ida launched a succession of effective stomach punches on his childhood foe, who gasped slightly as he stumbled back and flung the scorching golden oil into Garan's face. Despite the rage that he felt, Garan staggered a half pace back. Some of the oil had splashed into the ex-corporal's eyes. Rokoth knew that his respite would be brief and lunged for his ceremonial sever blade, which he kept in an ornamental aurorium scabbard on the wall. That was when Arajakal entered the room silently. Is it your wish that we alert the entire region? He thought, as he manipulated the orange orb of crystal that he held. Captain Rokoth Telat was dragged telekinetically by Arajakal back from his sword and quarry momentarily. Then he was thrust backwards and landed face up on the ground. Spluttering flames sprang up and rose around his wrists and ankles. 